Hey there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have card number two today for my Halloween series for 2018, and this one features some fun Simon Says stamp uh, stamp sets. So I'm going to start off with a, doing a little ink smushing. I'm doing this on a small panel of Strathmore 140-pound watercolor paper, and I have some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink, and so I just smushed that onto my tonic craft mat, and then I squished my cardstock all over that and then I heat set that in between and I do this about three times. I've done this many times on my channel so this is probably nothing new for most of you um, but I'm going to keep going and just keep getting that fun splotchy look all over that background. And I'm getting ready now that that is all dry I'm going to set that inside my uh, stamp platform and I am going to use the Simon Says Stamp Spiderweb Cling Stamp. It is a six by six stamp and I'm using some Versamark, Versamark Onyx Black ink because that is a good crisp ink and this is um, watercolor paper so I want to make sure that I get a good impression when I stamp that down. So I do it about three times just making sure that I have the uh, the stamp stamped really well down on top of that and that's the nice thing about the stamp platform is that you can do that. And now I'll move on to stamping my image. And my image comes from the Simon Says Stamp Trick or Treat set. I know this is an older set, but oh, these little cat and dog images are so darn cute. So I, I had to buy it. You, if you watched uh, my recent haul video, you saw that I got this. And I am doing the same thing onto some Strathmore watercolor paper. And I'm stamping that using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I went over that with my embossing buddy uh, because I do plan to emboss this. I want to emboss it simply for the raised edge so that when I'm watercoloring my little cat, I don't have to worry about waiting for things to dry too much in between. I can just go. So I'm covering that with some Simon Says Stamp Clear embossing powder. And then I'm going to heat set that with my heat tool. That will melt that powder and um, cause the, the black ink underneath to, to look raised. And I, I don't know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, to do it this way and it makes it very fast for coloring purposes. So now I've just got a piece of Nina cardstock and I'm going to stamp another image from my from that uh, trick-or-treat stamp and I'm using some poppy seed ink from Tailored Expressions and I'm just moving it down uh, and cleaning it off make sure it's good and clean because I want that that border to go all along that edge. Just trying to line that up the best that I can and I'll use my magnet to keep that in place in case I need to stamp it more than once. And then I'll use that same uh, poppy seed ink and stamp that down. And then I'm going to clean that off really well and I'm going to move on to stamping in between. And I want to use some pea pod ink. Uh, and it's going to look really dark and, I, and it's kind of off center, but I, I don't care. It look, it'll end up looking okay in the end once this ink dries. It looks much darker and kind of splotchy when you first stamp these inks, but these are some great inks. I really like the Tailored Expressions colors, and um, when they dry, they dry solid and, and good. I really like that. So once I'm done stamping, I'm going to set that off to the side to dry so that you can kind of, or that you get the idea of what I'm talking about. You'll see that after a little bit. So now I've got a piece of Lawn Fawn Perfectly Plaid Rainbow uh, cardstock, or paper, inside my, my stamp platform, and I'm going to use the Happy Halloween sentiment. And I grabbed another happy. I don't know why, for whatever reason, I was thinking, oh, there's the happy for it. But, uh, so I put that back. And I am going to emboss this as well. I want this to be good and raised. I want it to match really well with my cat. So I'm stamping that again with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then I will cover that with that clear embossing powder once I've got that stamped. And then I will heat set that as well. And that will make that um, sentiment really stand out. It's kind of fun how you can, it, it looks like the embossing powder covers it and it disappears. And then when I pull out my heat gun to melt the powder, you start to see it reappear. It's it's almost like magic. <laughs> and you'll know that it's done when you don't see any more, uh, when, it's, when it's all completely um, glossy. So to color my cat, I've pulled out my Magello Mission Gold watercolors, and I'm going to do some fairly simple watercoloring. This is a very simple image, so I figured I would just go pretty simple. So I'm using some purples on his cape, and I'm going to let that dry, and I'm just deciding on the color, and I know you're going to be surprised. I do end up coloring him like a Siamese, and uh, 
Uh, I'm just using more of a brown color. It's interesting when you're used to using Copic colors to try to go on to coloring with watercolors. So I'll deepen those parts where his markings would be for his little belly, his little paws, his ears, and his tail. And I'll just keep going over that with that same color and kind of softening out the edges just a little bit I'm using some water. And this is a number four Magello, or number four Magello. It's a number four silver water brush uh, by Black Velvet. And, or maybe it's Black Velvet by Silver. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> and now I'm going back over the purple to add some shadowing. And then I'll grab some water to kind of soften those edges out just a little bit so that it's not such a harsh line. And then this is where I've decided that his little mask will be purple as well. I just love these images. They're so cute. And I'll add some little uh, blush to his cheeks. Not too much. I don't want it to, to be too distracting. And then I'll add a little shadowing at the bottom. And then I'll set him off to the side to dry. And I'm going to trim down that panel. And I'm going to leave enough of a white space because I plan to put that behind the rest of it. So I've got some poppy seed uh, cardstock from Tailored Expressions as well. And I'm using my um, score buddy to score that at five and a half inches. So that is a top folding A2 size card. And I don't have the matching dies for this set. So I will fussy cut. I really don't mind. It's a pretty solid image. So it's not that big of a deal. But for images like this that do have like a tail or something small, I usually like to try or start fussy cutting those those tiny pieces first. So I started with his tail and then I will go around the rest of them just to make that a little bit easier. And he's ready to go. So now I'm gonna start assembling, well, after I put some spiders on there. I mean, you can't have a spider web without some spiders, right? And I did mention before that I really enjoy Halloween as far as like the, the cutesy. I don't, I don't like the scary at all. Uh, I'm alone a lot, so I don't I don't like the scary. So I'm going with the cutesy little spiders on their little web, and I'm going to do something even a little bit more fun with those later on. So to start assembling, I want this to almost take up the entire panel of my card base. So I'm kind of I'm trying to measure out how tall that's going to be, and I'm just sticking that down. I use some Tombow, per pardon my head, some Tombow permanent adhesive to adhere that. Yes, you are getting a good shot of my head. And then I'm going to take just a piece of black cardstock, just a strip that I had in my, uh, my stash, and I'm just going to tape that down over the top to give it a little bit of a band. And sorry about my head so much. And then I'll snip off the rest. And then on that one side, I'm going to adhere the panel that I stamped. And so I'll just line that up. And then when that's good and lined up, I will flip that over and I will trim off the excess. So I've covered everything with some foam tape, even his tail. And to get that to curve around, I took the backing off of both pieces. And now I'll start taking the release paper off of that and I will line that up. And I end up not lining it up very well. You will see that later. Uh, and I will put the cat down. And then I'm going to start stamping this, the inside. So I just have a piece of Nina cardstock that I have cut down to four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm stamping the puppy from the set. And I'm using that same Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink because these are really good for stamping. They give a good impression. But for the little speech bubble, I'm going to use that same Peapod ink that I was using before. But I want to make sure, because this is a fairly solid image, that it is uh, conditioned. So I'm just using the oils from my hand to condition that stamp. And then I'll stamp that out. And then I'm gonna add some little bats. And I'm using the poppy seed ink for the bats. And I will stamp a few of those all over, just about three. And then I'm gonna move on and grab one of the little spiders hanging from the web and I'm gonna stamp him up in the corner. And that'll finish the, the inside. So I'll adhere that using that same Tombow permanent adhesive. This is where I noticed that I didn't get it very well on the front. And I thought about trying to take it off, but that would have destroyed it. And I didn't want to do that now that everything was assembled. So we're just going to leave it as is. And so now I've grabbed some of those Nuvo Glow Drops in Sour Apple. And I'm putting those all over the spider's eyes because I am like obsessed with these. And I'll add a few more drops. And then when I'm done, I'm going to show you what that looks like with the lights off because it really does glow very well. And that will end up finishing off this card. So if you liked this card, I would love it if you hit the like button. That tells me that you liked it. And um, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thanks so much.